Hi everyone, this is Swati from the softwaretestinghelp.com team and in this segment we'll talk about requirement traceability matrix. Now requirement traceability matrix is, I, I must say it is one of the topics that I find hardest to teach, not because it's complicated, on the contrary it's one of the simplest concepts. But the reason why I have a really difficult time teaching it to a live class is because there are different opinions to different, um, you know, different different students or different people have different opinions of on what an RTM is, uh, where it should be used or how it should be used. Now, I wouldn't like to contradict any of them uh, because all are very valid points and very different ways of representation and, you know, very different ways of interpretation, uh, which is awesome. Variety is the key to an interesting class, which makes it awesome for me to discuss the topic. So, in this session, I'm going to share a few of my experience with, experiences with RTM and the way I approach RTM and um, the way I see um, a requirement traceability matrix can be built um, the way I've practically implemented it and I would like to share um, and then open up the forum for any of uh, the other opinions or any views that you might have. So technically a, any technical term I believe can be understood very very simply by actually understanding what its, um, what it, its literal meaning is. Now matrix is nothing but a row column, matrix is a row column combination. In other words, it's simply a table, right? Uh, like any other table that you create in an Excel sheet. Now traceability is basically being able to know from where you come and where you're going. So it is like uh, creating a trace, literally. And then you're trying to establish a trace for your requirements because the reason why RTM exists is because of an inbuilt need for testing engagements to satisfy the 100% test coverage rule. Um, so let me actually show you a uh, an example traceability matrix um, that is also available on our website. So let me actually define again. So it's a matrix which is a row column combination just like you know a simple table that you, you're seeing on my screen and it is there to establish traceability so you exactly know where you're coming from and where you're going and we start with requirements all the way to everything else which we'll see in, the little, in a little bit and an RTM is basically created to make sure if the testing engagement is following the 100% test coverage rule or not. Um, so one of the first things you know raw materials for us to start testing is requirements, correct? Now these requirements, how do they come to us? They come sometimes in the in the format of a BRD. Now business requirement documents, strictly speaking, should contain only the business requirements as you get them from the client. Uh, but then, you know, sometimes a BRD, FRD and TDD are all together merged into one as one requirement document. And that's okay because as long as requirements are returned in some form, it doesn't matter whether we are segregating into a separate business, functional or technical requirements. So all of these requirements come to us in one form or the other. So let's say, uh, let's refer to all of these documents as, you know, whether they come as one or many, as the reference documents. And the next thing, in another way, um, the requirements can come to us in the form of use cases. Sometimes these use cases are part of the BRD, FRD, TDD documents, but sometimes they are also independent documents. So they can come to us in the form of use cases, in the form of wireframes, or sometimes informally in a meeting they might be given to us verbally. So all of these are different ways in which you can, uh, or we can actually, um, identify or gather the requirements. So once you have the requirements, as testing teams, what do we do? We So requirements are like the raw material. Following the requirements, what we do is we create something called the test scenarios, which are the intermediaries for us to get started with the rest of the testing process. So a test scenarios are one line definition of what we are going to test. So um, let's say if the requirement is Gmail Compose email functionality and this is requirement number one uh, and then you will you know uh, list out what is it that you will test in each one of this so you will check for um, composing or you know trying to send an email with blank text or you know blank 
body of the email don't write anything and try to send it uh, explore try their rich text rich text options right for the body of the email um, no subject again of course you're going to elaborate it I'm just trying to give you an idea no subject um, no email addresses in the to list so all of these are possible things or you know one line pointers of what you would check so typically what we will do is we will give them an ID so this is related to composing an email and serial number correct so this one requirement has four of course many but for now it has four um, you know it has uh, four test scenarios that we've identified but of course these are not enough for us to go ahead and test we need to have detailed test cases so test cases we normally um, address them as TC underscore compose email underscore zero one um, so for the first test scenario check for sending an email with a blank body I'm gonna write exact sequence of steps like first login then click on compose email do not enter any text in the body uh, enter a subject and enter a uh, address a to address and then we click send so detailed step-by-step -step process uh, there are many other fields that can be included the data should be included everything else but you get the picture so similarly we'll have we'll write this kind of uh, test cases so you see when we when we are moving from requirements to test scenarios there might be a one-to-one -one. so one requirement gives uh, results into multiple test scenarios so a requirement to test scenario ratio is mostly one to many but it might be one to one as well similarly test scenario to test case it may be one to one or it may be one to many so one requirement will result in multiple test scenarios and one test scenario will result in multiple test cases so a simple requirement traceability matrix if we were to make sure that you know all the elements of testing has been followed from the requirement all the way to test cases you start creating an RTM so RTM will have the requirement ID so for this simple example a requirement ID a test scenario ID a test case ID so for one requirement requirement number one you have ended up with four test scenarios and for first test scenario you have this particular test case so if you have further test cases for these you'll go ahead and add these um, so if let's assume there is a second uh, you know uh, requirement for which there are again many um, other you know test uh, scenarios now how do we use this document let's for example say um, there is you know other test cases written for these right so let's say these are um, three and four that are written for this hypothetically uh, and then when you look at this there's a gap here so this shows that this particular test scenario has not been addressed in test cases so let's assume there's another you know requirement requirement number three um, that has all of this stuff again and then let's say this is the traceability matrix you ended up with since you know number one requirement has been addressed in these many test scenarios and these many test cases three also has been addressed in the, all of these ideally there should not be a gap here so let's actually fill it so when you see a gap like this it shows that this requirement has not been covered so this is the way in which traceability matrix can be used but as I was saying a lot of times there's a confusion on this topic because they usually uh, some um, you know uh, another school of thought is before you even write these test scenarios and test cases you actually start creating an RTM document uh, with the requirement ID you will start with one uh, go ahead and write your test scenarios and as soon as you write it you come here and you know update this sheet so RTM is done along with this documentation I for one don't see a lot of value in that because to create an RTM you will need all this raw material all these IDs so for me without those IDs going back and forth between an RTM and the documents is kind of you know a waste of time and I feel like I'm all over the place so that is why I like to create an RTM after I'm done with all the documentation as a checkpoint to see whether I'm following the 100% uh, test coverage or not 
So I'll quickly, so this is simply an RTM. You can actually color code this, make it look fancy, but at its core, this is the simplest way to create an RTM. Now, if you are using a test management software like QC or, you know, QTest or anything else, you don't have to explicitly create an RTM because traceability is an inbuilt, inbuilt aspect of the tools. But even if you do have to create it manually, you have just seen how simple it is. Uh, so this is a traceability matrix that we have on our site. Now this is for a project where there is an FRD so you can actually take a look at this. Um, the business requirements are defined in a way that there is section 1, 2 and 3 and in the functional requirements section 1 is elaborated again, uh, 2 is elaborated, 3 is, uh, sorry, uh, 1 is elaborated and it's broken down into 1.1, 1.2 sections. Um, Similarly, there are some test scenarios that have written, that have been written to it, and of course there will be test cases. That step isn't there here, but when you have to map it all into test uh, at an RTM, um, the business requirement section one, since you know the requirements are not ID, they don't have an identification number. We are using the section numbers as a way to reference back to them and the corresponding FST section is this, and the resulting test scenarios are all of these and for each test scenario, these are the test cases that are written. So for some reason, if all of this section is blank, it shows that if all of this section is blank, it sh sorry, it shows that you know, um, requirement 1.2 has been completely, uh, you know, ignored for testing activities. But on the other hand, if there is, you know, um, let's do this. If, for example, there is a business requirement, you know, there, but then nothing else you're seeing from the, uh, so this has not moved into FSD, this has not moved into test scenarios, not moved into test cases. Now, what this could potentially mean is um, this requirement, the requirement number two has been descoped, but the BRD has not been updated. So this is also a way to see that I have, do we have the right reference documents? Have they been updated or not? Have, have the updated document been considered for testing? So all of these things become much clearer when you are going to use an RTM. Now here in the test scenario ID, I've also used the test scenario description. You don't have to do that. The only reason why I choose to include it is because I've, I've, I've chosen to extrapolate the RTM into uh, reading the status and the defects. So I'm actually using this as a status report. Uh, so since status report is sent to teams that are not exclusively QA teams, it is a good idea to make sure that, you know, they understand what this code means. Uh, but then you don't have to do that. Simply, you know, giving the numbers like we did here that should suffice. Um, but then you can actually expand it to read the status of each uh, test case and actually pro provide the corresponding defect IDs. Now how you can, inter I mean this, how this can be much more useful when you include the defect IDs and everything is, see when I see that there's a defect ID 1, I can tell that this is affecting the loan process. So that kind of extrapolation all the way to business requirements, I will be able to do it seamlessly if I choose to include these two columns. Uh, an RTM is uh, also not a deliverable to anybody. It's just an internal point of check that the QA teams do. So that is why most of the companies or most of the clients, most of the projects, they kind of skip this process. Uh, but then it's up to you. It's definitely something that is worth investing your time on and it doesn't take long. Uh, it's also a collective team effort. Everybody, whoever is responsible for their particular requirements, their particular test scenarios, they all contribute to creating one traceability matrix. So as a group effort, it doesn't take more than an hour or so, but then the, you know, benefits are, you know, uh, self-explanatory. Uh, you can always make sure that, you know, your testing um, is being effective and the coverage-wise, every requirement is addressed in the testing activity. So as always, um, please let us know if you have any questions or comments. Thank you everyone.